It's strange to know that somehow the Dragon Ball Z franchise has managed to produce some of the best fighting games and arena brawlers out there while simultaneously producing some of the worst fighting games and arena brawlers out there. In fact, if you're familiar with this search for the worst fighting game thing that I do, you would know that a Dragon Ball game currently sits as the worst fighting game that I ever played and today we'll see if another particularly infamous Dragon Ball fighter can dethrone it and claim the title. Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu. Perhaps it's slow hanging fruit for this list since well, this is a Game Boy Advance fighter but the fighting game and it was also suggested by a good friend of mine so let's get to it. Taiketsu saw a release in the United States of America on November 24th of 2003 with a follow-up release in Europe on March 26, 2004. This game was published by Atari and developed by Webfoot Technologies who had already handled a few Dragon Ball games in the past though these Dragon Ball games were top-down action role-playing game type of games and not a fighting game like this one. On its face, Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu is a fairly simple fighting game. Four buttons, two punches, two kicks, with directionals to get you all about the screen in front of you. You also have a bevy of different command normals that help flesh out your move list a little bit. You have a dash for some mobility alongside a decently quick walk speed too, and you have the basics of this game. Every character, while it does seem like they share the exact same normals as one another, do have a unique signature attack on top of three unique special moves that they can burst out on all of their opponents, all of which cost between one and three bars of energy. You can also do battle in the air, which really is just a mash fest akin to the beam struggles in other Dragon Ball games. It's just not as cool, unfortunately. Roster-wise, Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu boasts a total of 15 characters to play as, though a majority of them are locked by at the start of the game, unfortunately, giving you only 7 characters to play as. Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, Android 18, Future Trunks, and Vegeta to start with. Beyond the default cast, you can also play as Raditz, Nappa, Frieza, Android 16, Majin Buu, Cell, Gotenks, and Broly. As a bonus note, Taiketsu was actually the first game in the Dragon Ball franchise to feature Broly as a playable character, in North America at least. Europeans and the Japanese got him in Super Batoden 2, which preceded this game by about a decade or so. Before I get off characters though, I was curious as to one thing, which is, what moves does Raditz have exactly? The dude was barely a character in the show after all. A uh, one arc villain who dies to a full Nelson. Well, his supers turn out to be an elbow drop, a crappy little beam attack, and get this, a spin dash. As for where you'll be fighting, well, Taiketsu does actually have a decent range of stages that are all recognizable areas from Dragon Ball lore. Kame House, Snake Way, Wastelands, Inside of Boo, the classics, really, all of which are actually recognizable unlike in, say, Ultimate Battle 22 or Final Bout. And that's basically it for the mechanics in this game and stuff for this game as well, so let's start playing it for real. Oh my god. God, this game is so manic. Taiketsu is very loose and very fast. Just look at how quick my light kick is coming out here. You move just as quick too, and you have a dash available as well, which makes this movement even better, or worse, up to you, really. Your jumps are very fast and have some really strange and absurd arcs. They cover most of the screen. It makes trying to go for crossovers a bit awkward, I can't lie. Your attacks are very janky and fairly poorly animated too. So everyone, it at least I'm pretty sure everyone does this awkward little kick where it looks like they're torquing their whole body into it. I say everyone, but I can't lie, I didn't test out every solitary character in this game because I would have had to unlock everybody and that is just a grind I am not willing to do for this channel and we'll discuss at a later moment in this video. A bunch of odd things that I'd like to comment on now. This game does have combos and even has a little combo counter too, but really this counter only appears when you do the game's built-in combos, never at any other point. Like, I'm pretty confident this is a genuine combo here. But it's not counted as such. I suppose it is possible the AI is just getting hit four times in a row, but am I wrong here, Taiketsu experts? I'm sure there's at least one of you out there. Am I comboing or not? Well, the characters in this game do all share the same basic normals and stats. 
I think. Every character does have a different speed level, with Krillin being the fastest, I believe. Because of this, I'm almost sure Krillin can infinite with his standing light kick. Once again, it could just be AI's dumbassery, but come on. Taking 57 shin kicks in a row isn't like a Dragon Ball Z character. I'll add here as well that the uppercut seems to have an absolutely insane hitbox. I got clipped a mile away. As for your supers, well, they try to do their best to make them look halfway decent at least. Like, this is definitely a Gallic gun. This is definitely a Destructo disc. But there's a few annoying bits here, I won't lie. Firstly, you have to charge to even be able to use any of them. I had thought when I booted this game, I'd be able to gain some meter by hitting my opponent, or by getting hit by them, or guarding like in every fighting game ever with a super meter, but nope. Charge only. Which, not a terribly big deal, admittedly, since it's pretty easy to get off your charge. Especially since the AI's move when you charge is to typically charge right back in your face. They definitely charge faster than you, though. The cheating bastards. Although, I'd like to note here that there's a funny little exploit you can take advantage of. You see, to initiate the air combat feature, both players have to input a little button sequence before they both leap into the sky and start mashing. But if you just let your opponent jump and don't follow them, you basically can charge all three levels of your meter for free. Yeah, they can come down on you, but that doesn't do shit for damage, so just never jump to follow them and charge instead. Pretty sure the majority of level threes are totally unblockable too. They do some decent damage, and while it does take a little practice, they come out reliably enough. Crazily, the level threes are totally uninterruptible, so once they're out, they are coming out. uninterruptible and unblockable to boot. Also, once I killed Goku so fucking hard, his corpse just kind of floated in midair. You know, I'm giving this game a lot of the benefit of the doubt, but I'm starting to think that this game just might be a piece of shit. In terms of modes, the game does offer a small variety of different ones to play with. Turn mode is where you'll spend most of your time since you get the character endings there, and most of the secret characters that you can unlock there are also unlocked via the arcade ladder. A few are unlocked via endurance and time challenge, but most of them come via arcade mode. Regardless of the mode, you'll be earning points, which you can spend on the game's various extras, like bios, which are actually really long and really detailed to boot. Well, on top of those, there's also some really extra lame modes and still images from the anime too as well. I think it's kind of weird that you don't just buy the other characters in this game as well, but you have to unlock them through clearing the game's other various modes. Which, let me add here that the last little cherry on top of this shit Sunday really quick. When I first beat the tournament mode, I unlocked Raditz. Makes sense, right? I read in a guide online that if I wanted to unlock Nappa, I had to beat the tournament mode with Vegeta. So I did that, and nothing. Nothing was unlocked. When I began this game, I wanted to actually try my best at unlocking as many characters as possible, so I consulted a guide online I was reading, and again, and this guide that I read isn't even confident on how to unlock the characters in this game. Like, if I wanted to play as Android 16, for example, it says to beat the time challenge mode between two to four times. If I want to go tanked, I have to clear the tournament mode four times, and then if that doesn't work, do it one more time with Goku. I have to clear this shit five times, potentially? Nappa didn't even lock when I beat the game with Vegeta like the mode advised. Do I have to clear it with Goku too, just in case? Probably, because to unlock Blue, I need to beat tournament mode with every single solitary character in the game, and then maybe do it again with Goku. No fucking thanks. I've had enough of this game already after two playthroughs. I think that's pretty much it here. It's a Game Boy fighter. They're really isn't much to report on, but oh my god, where does this end up on the list of worst fighting games? Honestly, I think I can comfortably rank Taiketsu on the list as the new number 14. Listen, I know that's probably a bit higher than expected, but I'll be straight with you, dear viewer. Taiketsu definitely isn't a good game. 
It's janky, it looks like shit, and it's super buggy to boot, I won't lie. But it was honestly way less frustrating than the games below it. Dare I say I was actually able to have a little bit of fun with this one. A jank Kasuge fighting game like this is far more enjoyable than a stiff piece of garbage, I'm willing to say that much. Perhaps I'm being a bit biased since I had this game as a kid, actually, and thanks to my love of fighting games, even back then, it ended up seeing a good amount of play on my Game Boy SP. But really, as crap as this game is, it's not the worst fighting game ever made. Shoutouts to the Rad Rad for suggesting this game to me on the Mortal Kombat 1 Expectation Podcast years ago. That'll be the end of this one, though. As always, dearest of viewers, my name is Hades Manticore, and this here channel is City Sam Manticore. Thanks a ton for watching, if you did. Be sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe as well, since as always, there's more content to come from me. I'll see y'all in the next video, too. Goodbye.